Hello everyone, I am Dr. Saurabh Dixit and welcome to my channel. So today, as per promise, I have brought one more interesting small topic for you. And this is again a very, 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 very important topic. So uh, not taking a lot of time, I will straight forward take you to this uh, scenario. Uh, personally also we get a lot of patients with this kind of complaint that there is a painful or there is a swelling over the neck and this is moving with deglutition. So I will give you a brief history of this patient. Swelling, mobile swelling over the neck moving with deglutition. This is what or there is a neck swelling. If you see only the image it is showing you the neck swelling. I am not given any clinical history but I am giving you a case scenario. Let us make a case scenario. A 26 year old female presenting to you with swelling over the neck and this is moving with deglutition and also with protrusion of tongue. The question ends here, you know what it is. So let us keep uh, a differential diagnosis window open and we have this kind of scenario. How we will approach to this question from examinations perspective also, from clinical rounds perspective also, from viva perspective also uh, or as a surgeon in general. This is what is very 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 important. So let us try to evaluate this now you must be knowing by this time what we are because if the if you see the second image you can guess that this is a case of thyroglossal duct cyst very good. So let us try to understand each and everything in and out about this and let us try to understand what are the concepts that we need to understand. So when we talk about a thyroid swelling or when we talk about the neck swelling. So this is what is very 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 important. So neck swelling or a thyroid swelling how we approach. Now in this case when we have a neck swelling and that too in the center of the neck. Now you are thinking that this could be there could be two differential diagnosis. Now what could be differential diagnosis? It could be a thyroid, it could be a thyroid swelling or it could be or it could be a thyroglossal duct cyst. Now these are two things that we need to keep. There could be other things also but these are the two primary things. So how to see? Now these swellings are enclosed in the pretracheal fascia. So whenever you deglute, you drink water, you eat. So there is movement of this swelling also. So the very next thing that you need to check is the movement. So the movement, the movement of swelling with respect to two things. So the movement of swelling with deglutition with deglutition and the movement of swelling with the protrusion of tongue. Now there are two important things. So protrusion of tongue, why it is important? Just wait for two minutes and then we will see. So protrusion of tongue and deglutition. Now try to understand if it is a thyroid swelling, you know thyroid swelling. So always remember it will move with deglutition but it will not move with protrusion of tongue. However, if it is a thyroglossal, if it is a thyroglossal duct cyst, it will move with protrusion of the tongue as well as deglutition. Why? Try to understand a thyroglossal duct cyst is connected with the base of the tongue and therefore with the deglutition as well as with the protrusion of the tongue, it is going to move forward. So one thing is clear that we have a thyroid swelling and now we have certain things in our mind. Now let us discuss the concept of thyroglossal duct cyst on which this question is asked or the today's case scenario is based. So when we talk about thyroglossal, thyroglossal duct cyst, now this is where the things will start. So thyroglossal duct cyst, what it is? So in a layman's language, we can write it as that, as that it is cystic enlargement of a persistent thyroglossal duct. So when we talk about cystic enlargement of cystic enlargement of persistent persistent thyroglossal duct the very next question is how is this possible now the reason for this persistence of thyroglossal duct is answer is due to failed regression now you must be thinking sir how is it possible that it has failed to regress do you know there is a deadline for submission of a blueprint of a body if we need to finalize a thing, we need to finalize it by 8th week of life. If something has to be deleted, it should be deleted by 8th week of life, else it will be present in the newborn also or it will be persisted. Like if you talk about Meckel's, what is Meckel's? It's a vitellointestinal duct which failed to regress beyond 8th week of life. So once the 8th week window crosses, it has to be present now. It could be vestigial organ, that is different thing, but it is there. So failed regression 
of the thyroglossal duct of the thyroglossal duct beyond eighth week of life beyond eighth intra uterine week of life now the question is there are so many things which fail to regress but they don't convert into a cyst how is this possible that it converted into a cyst now here comes the role of the epithelium so if you talk about the epithelium which is present in this thyroglossal duct cyst this is what is very 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 important this is pseudo this is pseudo stratified pseudo stratified ciliated ciliated columnar epithelium so pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium now here the things come into the role play so ciliated columnar epithelium what is there so suppose there is a cyst which is present at the time of birth so at birth the cyst is not present but the duct is present actually so at the time of birth the duct is present now you have to understand that we have an active epithelium so these cuboidal epitheliums will have tubules and these tubules will secrete some content and this is going to cause what the cystic enlargement of the things so there will be cystic enlargement of things and why there will be cystic enlargement of the things because of the active secretion so do you know that the transformation into a cyst happens during the you can say the process of evolution and the complete cystic enlargement happens by the second or by the third decade so by second or the third decade the cyst actually forms so remember the thyroglossal duct cyst this is a congenital anomaly so first of all you have to understand that this is a congenital anomaly which is present at the time of birth but the cystic transformation actually happens at the time of what at the time of the second decade or the uh, you can say the third decade of the life also so this is what is very important now what is going to be the future of this cyst now this is a cyst which will keep on enlarging just let's take it as a balloon if you keep on blowing a balloon what will happen it will increase in size get distended and there will be two things either the friend sitting next to you will poke a pin and burst it or it will spontaneously rupture so rupture is inevitable for this cyst you it will rupture and you have to keep in mind that it will rupture no one can you can stop it so what is going to happen if it ruptures so why the rupture happens you know that either it could be either it could be iatrogenic it could be iatrogenic rupture or it could be what students spontaneous rupture so spontaneous how it happens like you are tempted to take an fna from this thinking it to be a thyroid cyst therefore it's very important to clinically assess the swelling before you take any decision so if you go for fna for this so the cyst will get ruptured the problem is that the cyst will collapse also but since this is an active cyst this is an active cyst it will keep on producing some content and every time a granulation product or plug is going to form near it so what happens the cyst is evacuated it will collapse you are very happy that i got rid of the cyst after 2 weeks or 4 weeks again something is coming out again you present with a distended swelling and automatically again this is uh, sloughed off why all these things are happening why these things are happening let me tell you every time the plug wants to form it so suppose there is a there is a epithelial plug which forms here so there is an epithelial plug which forms here the cyst will continue to distend and again it will wash off this plug so over the time slowly and slowly this surface becomes what epithelized so there shall be epithelization of the epithelization of the orifice and once there is epithelization this actually converts itself into a what students a fistula so intermittent discharges happens and then there is a persistent opening so the cyst is congenital but the fistula is acquired and it is acquired because either of a spontaneous rupture or an iatrogenic rupture now this is what is very 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 important the next is what could be the potential risk of malignancy students less than 1% risk of malignancy is there less than 1% risk of malignancy is there in this cyst the next question is what malignancy can arise and what can never arise remember it is a part of the medial system of the thyroid so you know thyroid develops in two parts the medial and the lateral the lateral part contributes to para follicular cells and medial part contributes to the follicular cells so via follicular cell any cancer can arise 
but medullary thyroid cancer can never arise so yes if it is asked in your exams what cancer can arise answer is it's a papillary ca which can arise now the location if you talk about most common location the most common location is the subhyoid or infrahyoid so subhyoid near the hyoid bone it actually gets the place so it may be retro it may be supra so it may be juxto the juxta lot of things are there now what could be the management of this it's very 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 simple you have to go for n block cystectomy n block cystectomy what do you mean by n block cystectomy now this is what is very 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 important now try to understand what is this block i understand that cystectomy has to be done so this is the cornu of the hyoid this is the body of the hyoid again this is the cornu of the hyoid and around this suppose you have a cyst so one thing that you need to understand is that you will excise excise the cyst like this just see so here also you are going to excise it here also you are going to excise it and then let us remove this part let us remove this part okay so you can see that hyoid central part of the hyoid along with the cyst has been removed and this is what is known as the n block cystectomy this was for the first time done by cyst trunk and that is why this is known as cyst trunk surgery so this was a small crisp video discussion for today and you can see what is n block cystectomy this is what the students known as n block cystectomy where you divide the hyoid the central part of the hyoid and we go right up to the maximum proximal location we can search this thyroglossal duct and we can ligate it so i hope you enjoyed it do subscribe to my channel do comment in the comment section how you like the what you liked about the video or if you have any other topic in demand you want me to discuss i'll discuss so do share the link with your friends so that they are also benefited thank you